Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Artist Loft class. I am your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and I'm thrilled to be partnered with Michaels to bring you this ongoing series featuring free and premium classes. Uh, so tonight's class is on blind contour drawing uh, hands using soft pastels. And this class is really a precursor to the class that we have coming up uh, next Wednesday evening. Um, so next Wednesday, which will be, uh, so today is the, the 15th, um, 22nd, right? Um, <laughs> I'm like I can add seven to 15, you guys. Um, so next week's class is on drawing the wooden mannequin hand and we'll be using the artist loft wooden mannequin hand, which I've got right here. And I put a little thing in the hand because I just thought it looked cool holding that. Um, anyway, so next cl week's class is a premium class and we'll be using the wooden mannequin hand and we'll be going very uh, step-by-step uh, very slowed down. The premium classes are always a bit slower paced. Um, there's a smaller group in the class, so a lot less going on in the chat. And so um, you're definitely getting your money's worth uh, for the, the small fee that those premium class um, cost you. And the recordings to those classes are only sent to students who registered for the class beforehand. So make sure you uh, sign up for that one next week and um, that will also be very beneficial if you struggle with drawing realistic hands we will have a premium class in August on drawing realistic hands um, using actual hands and I'll, I'll be using a reference image that I will provide for that one and that one is not actually on the, um, the calendar just yet I'm actually um, submitting that that class uh, today or just submitted it. So anyway, um, but just wanted to let you know that tonight's class is a precursor for these premium classes on um, drawing the wooden mannequin hand and drawing realistic hands. So if you're catching this on uh, YouTube um, and you're you know not able to or, or before those classes happen, then um, you can sign up, but if it's after the fact, um, they they are talking about starting to have those premium classes listed on the Michaels website so that people can access the classes after they happen. I've been told that um, they're working on getting that up and running. So there have been a lot of questions about whether or not um, the previous premium classes are still accessible after the fact. Um, anyway, but just wanted to make sure to put those on your radar so that you can catch them before they happen. And um, yeah, so we'll be going very slowly to, or we'll be going very um, in depth into the form, basic form of the hand tonight. And the actual blind contour line drawing is, is really gonna go pretty fast once we get to it. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time really explaining the structure of the human hand, um, the anatomy of the hand, and all of the surface of the hand, those contour lines that I'm always talking about and the value shapes, et cetera, so that next week in the premium class, I can really just walk you through very step-by-step -step to draw the wooden mannequin hand um, like this. And same thing with the, the next uh, premium class. Um, so I'll go ahead and switch to my tabletop view and we'll get started with tonight's class. Okay, so we're going to be doing this, this action, um, these blind contour line drawings of, of the hand. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Don't forget to tag your work with the hashtags, make it with Michael's, Michael's classes, and you can follow me or tag me um, at Adrian Hodge Art on Instagram. And I will be on Instagram after uh, class this evening at about 7.05 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. I'll do a, a brief Q&A um, centering on the topic of tonight's class. And I try to do that after every class. Um, it doesn't always happen um, after class, but um, try to do it after each one. And those are all listed on my Instagram. So if you wanna go back and check out previous um, live, uh, Instagram live Q and A's, they're there under my uh, IGTV tab on Instagram. Okay, and here's some of my personal work uh, using uh, 
primarily calligraphy ink. If you want to uh, check me out on Instagram any further or Facebook, I'm Adrian Hodge Fine Art. Okay, so we're going to be using very simple supplies tonight. Uh, we're using just the Artist Loft um, drawing pad and the Artist Loft soft pastels. Um, but you are welcome to use any number of substitutes instead of the soft pastels tonight. I chose the soft pastels for um, two reasons. One, because you can't erase them. And so you kind of have to, um, I mean, you can, if you really want to, you can get a kneaded eraser and erase them, but we're gonna be drawing kind of hard lines with them tonight. So I wanted to, um, to use them because yeah, it's, they're difficult to erase and you have to really embrace what you do with with a line with the soft pastel drawing a line like that. Another substitute you could use is, you know, you could just use pencils, um, but if you're using pencils, maybe grab a few different colored pencils or maybe a few different markers. Here's another version of the same exercise, blind contour line drawing of hands using a pencil, a colored marker and a, a black brush pen. So, um, you could use, you know, markers, you could use Sharpies, you could use um, different colored pens. And you just, the other reason for the soft pastels is that we have multiple colors to choose from. And I wanna do this layering effect with our blind contour drawing so that we end up with this kind of cool jazzy uh, product where the, the colors are overlapping like that. And it takes a, a drawing that maybe is not so, um, you know, I don't want to say like not good or not impressive on its own, but maybe, you know, people have a, a tendency to judge the, um, the product that they get with uh, the blind contour line drawing. They tend to judge it um, so by itself and say like, it's not very good or it doesn't look like a hand or the proportions are off. But when you overlap the uh, drawings like this and you do multiple ones on top of each other, it ends up giving you a, a product that I think just looks kind of cool and, and abstract like that. So that's the reason for the overlapping with multiple colors. Um, any questions about supplies or what we're doing tonight before we get into it? Yes, we have a couple of questions about the pastels. So one is, how how do you know if um, pastels are soft pastels? What's the difference? Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw somebody said they have oil pastels. Uh, the oil pastels are kind of like crayons, and the soft pastels are more like chalk. So okay. that makes total sense. And uh, the other question is, what shades of pastels will be will we be using today? Um, you can use any colors that you choose. So I've got the uh, 36 piece set, I believe here. I tossed the box across the room. Um, yeah, I think I've got 36 uh, soft pastels here. I've got, you know, all these shades of blues and greens and purples. I've got all these shades of yellows, reds and oranges and then uh, neutral colors. And I've kind of mixed them up. I've got some reds in there. Um, but point being, I only used in my example here four colors, the primary colors and black. So if you want to do the same thing, that's kind of a fun color scheme. Um, so I had just red, blue, and uh, yellow, the primary colors for uh, my example here, and then black. So that's a fun color scheme. You might do the same thing, or you might just choose um, a few colors that are different from each other. So maybe, you know, uh, complementary colors, orange and blue, um, purple and yellow, um, you know, red and green. Those are all complementary colors and are highly contrasting. Um, or really any colors that, that you want. And it's really not important. The Im important thing is more what we're gonna do to warm up and, and get to the point where we, we start to, 
to do this. Um, so I did keep the supply list super simple and I was even double checking the supply list before class and I realized that all I told you to have for the class was uh, the soft pastels and the, the drawing paper. But um, you might just grab a, a pencil, does not matter which, which pencil or maybe a marker, um, you know, for warming up right now. Or you can just use the soft pastels for, for warming up as well. But I wanna do some warm ups before we, we start to, to do the blind contours because we could, we could do a blind contour in about two minutes here and call the class done. But I want to make sure that everybody is getting a, a product that they are satisfied with. So I've got some warm ups, which um, you're welcome to do with the, the soft pastels as well. Um, so the first one was I looked at the wooden mannequin hand and I broke down um, and I don't expect you to have the wooden mannequin hand tonight, by the way, either. This is just um, kind of supplementary for next week's class for the premium class on uh, drawing the wooden mannequin hand. But uh, I just wanted you to observe it with me a little bit and we'll just talk about the shapes that we're seeing just breaking down the wooden mannequin hand. And then um, we'll do some very um, primitive kind of uh, sketching again with the soft pastels. I just think I found the soft pastels to be very um, easy for just, you know, quick, loose sketching that hopefully we're not judging too much. And then, you know, if you have more time and, and want to do like some more in-depth sketches of the wooden mannequin hand with the, the soft pastels, you know, uh, like next week after the premium class, that, that could be something you could do uh, as a warm up to that one if you have the wooden mannequin hand. Um, and also for the, uh, yeah, premium class next week, I um, did not provide a reference image. So you are gonna want to have your own uh, wooden mannequin hand, but they're very affordable um, artist loft brand hand that I've got here. Um, and you can order them online or, um, you know, curbside pickup through Michaels, etc. Okay, so uh, the first thing, like I said, I wanted to just go through and uh, break down the, the wooden mannequin hand shapes and forms that I'm seeing there. And you can do this in soft pastel or you can do it in pencil because the soft pastel is gonna get pretty messy. Um, and for this, I'm gonna use the, the primary colors as well. Okay, so uh, the first shape that I'm seeing on the, the wooden mannequin hand. And sometimes this is just helpful to look at it on the wooden hand versus your own hand, but obviously it's the same sort of shape and form on your own hand. But when it comes to drawing things that are very, um, okay, I'm seeing a few people in the chat saying that my camera is too close to the, um, the table. So I'm gonna make an adjustment here, even though I'm concerned about the shakiness that's going to go down while I do that. Let me try to get it a little farther away. I think that that might be a little better. Okay. Um, all right. So when we're looking at our hands, it is something happens when we're looking at things that are, I'm going to switch back to just my forward facing while I'm just chatting for a minute here. We can look at, at my hand in front of me. Um, when it comes to the human face and when it comes to the hand and when it comes to the body, and we're, we're about to enter into a lot of figure drawing uh, classes throughout this series in the, in the next year. I've been talking about these figure drawing classes for a while, but starting in um, September, um, well, really with the hand in now and in August, and then uh, in September, we'll have some figure drawing classes using some reference images of a model that I, I recently uh, collected. But uh, something happens when to in our brains when we are drawing something that is so familiar to us, and that is we tend to default to our imagination and not draw what we're actually seeing. And um, 
So faces are really tricky like that, but hands are especially tricky, not to mention they are very complicated subject matter, but what you tend to get when uh, you draw a hand when you're not slowing down and really looking at a hand, what tends to happen is something that looks like this. Right? It's like the hamburger helper glove version of a hand or like a cartoon version of a hand, right? And there's so much more going on with the human hand than just those, um, you know, loaves of bread and the outer, like the hamburger helper glove uh, shape. So what I want to do is break it down to all of the forms, all of the three dimensional forms that are happening within the hand. So first of all, we have a uh, circle. So if we're looking at the palm of the hand, there is a circular shape, right? And then around that, we've got a rounded square shape, but it's not flat. None of it is flat, right? It's kind of like a toaster oven happening here. It's got depth, maybe like a washing machine, okay? And then on top of that washing machine, we got a chicken leg right here. We got this big meaty thing that kind of resembles, I'm really simplifying y'all, um, but it kind of resembles, everybody seeing the chicken, chicken leg, chicken wing? Okay, so we've got that shape. And then we have these long skinny rectangular tube shapes. On top of that, I might be going into my, my rings of my, um, my sketchbook here. I might have went a little too high up on the page as I'm sketching this. But um, those, those long skinny tube or rectangular or loaf of bread shape, they're not all the same length. So they kind of follow a bit of an arc here at the top. So if we do that, we kind of have the shape of a mitten, right? But within the shape of the mitten, within this arc, we've got, we've got our fingers. And that we have three joints within the fingers. So that's why I drew the wooden mannequin hand like this. And I put the, uh, the little circles where all of the, the joints are happening. And then I put another circle at the fingertips. So you can kind of just draw the fingertips at the end of that arc. And then we've got the joints. This is extremely elementary and basic here. The joints mostly line up. We can see that on the, the wooden mannequin hand, but not entirely. The arc definitely on the, the middle finger that it goes up a little bit on that, that top uh, finger joint, but the, the knuckles, the, the middle joint, they are all lined up like so, right? Okay, so there's our, our finger shapes. And then the thumb, the first uh, joint on the thumb is more in line with the, the knuckle on the fingers, right? So right here, it's very much in line with, with the knuckles. So we can draw that circle there. And then we've got the other knuckle of the thumb down here in our little chicken wing shape. Okay, but there's a lot of three dimensions happening here. Now let's look at the three dimensions on the uh, fingers themselves. Um, I'm always talking about contour lines and tonight I'm going to talk about it even more um, because we're doing blind contour line drawings, right? But if we look at the, uh, the contours of the, the knuckle itself, 
it's it's a cylinder, right? All of the, the fingers are following a cylindrical shape. And I'm looking at the, the back of the hand. So where you can see the kind of wrinkles on the, the top of the, the knuckles here. And you can see like, especially on my hand without some lotion on it right now, uh, my hands are kind of dry and you can really see all those wrinkles and lines. We've got something like this happening. switch to blue for a second here. So if we're talking about a cylinder and we're looking at a cylinder head on where our eye line is kind of at the center of the cylinder. So let's say that I'm just going to draw a little eyeball right here. So my eye line is at the center. There's going to be a bit of an equator line at the center of the, the cylinder looking at the top and the bottom, there's a curve down and there's a curve up at the top of the cylinder. So everything above that equator line curves up and everything below the equator line curves down. That's what's happening on your knuckle, right? When you bend your finger, you can see there's like this little sandwich or hamburger shape. You can see the equator line in the center and you can see that curve up of the contours there and the, the curve down around the knuckles. So I really just want to get you looking at these details, looking at all of these wrinkles and folds, um, because it's something that you're not taking into account if you're just drawing this shape, right? We're not taking anything into account there. We're drawing something very flat. We're not looking at, at the inner lines, at the wrinkles and the folds. We're just looking at the outer edges of the line. And that is not you know, all of the contour lines. I should have done this before I got chalk past or soft pastel all over my hands. But the very first class that we ever did in this series, I refer back to it often. And tonight is no different. Intro to graphite and drawing forms. We talked about the contour lines on the form of an apple. And you can refer back to that class. Jimena uh, can drop the link to that one in the chat if she hasn't already. Um, but, you know, we looked at the contours of an apple. We've done this with dozens of subjects now by this point in uh, this drawing series. And um, this accounts for all of the surfaces of the form. So we're not just looking at the outer surface, the outer lines of the form. We're looking at every surface of the form. So what are the lines doing across the three dimensions of the hand here? What are the lines doing across the three dimensions here? What are the lines doing across? It may feel flat in some sense when you're looking at a hand like this, but if the hand is coming towards you in any way or doing anything interesting, a lot of those shapes and forms are, are changing. So we just want to account for that three dimension. It's it's not flat. It's very meaty and thick right here. It's thicker around the, the meaty part under the thumb. Um, it's thinner right here, but it's not flat. Um, and all of the fingers are not flat. They have a lot of three dimensions happening. If you've been following along in this drawing series up until now, we've talked a lot about um, value shapes and the, the shadows and uh, organic shapes that make up any particular uh, form when we look at it in the light, which is everything, right? We can only see things based on how the light is falling on them. So in the drawing realistic hands class that's coming up in August, um, I provide a reference photo that shows a hand um, with a peace sign like this, and there's a lot of very strong contrasting light. And so all of those shadow shapes are extremely important to showing the realistic hand. But what's also important is these contour lines that are curving and wrapping around the three dimensions of, of the form. So in order to do a convincing blind contour line drawing, to do a blind contour line drawing that feels something like this, or like our example uh, in the soft pastels, we've got to get away from thinking about just the outer 
edges of the hand and we have to think about all of the three dimensions of the hand when i'm drawing the hand um, without looking at uh, my paper i'm only viewing uh, the, the subject so i realized we're this far into the class and in case i did not explain the definition of a blind contour drawing it's where we draw the contours of a form and we do not look at the um, at our drawing hand and we don't look at the, the paper where we're drawing so we're only looking at the subject so when you're um, a beginner in drawing and you haven't done a blind contour drawing before sometimes the blind contours can end up not looking like anything and can just look like a bunch of scribbles on the page and students will be very judgmental and harsh about the product that they get and I just want to remind you that um, this exercise is not about the product, even though, you know, I've got a few tricks um, that we're using tonight to uh, get a product that might be nice. The overall goal of blind contour drawing is to uh, have a direct communication that is happening between the hand that is drawing and the eyes that are looking at the subject. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do a blind contour now just to give an, an example um, and you're welcome to do it with me or to just um, uh, watch me with this uh, first one and I'm just going to use red um, so that it or actually I'll use black. Um, but I wanted to face forward one more time and just show you that I am going to turn my body in my chair away from my desk so my drawing paper is here. And I'm going to be looking at my hand over here. I'm going to put my hand in an interesting position. So I'm not going to uh, make my hand just flat like this. I want to curve my fingers towards myself in an interesting way. Maybe do, you know, like, you know, UT hook em horns or I mean, former, I'm a longhorn. So that's a go-to for me or, you know, peace sign, or if you know some sign language, or if you just want to, you know, make your hand do some interesting thing. Um, but you are not looking at your paper. You're not looking at the, uh, the drawing. You're only looking at the subject. So I'm going to turn my body away from my desk. And if you need to like weight your paper down, put something on top of it so it doesn't shift, um, you can do that but I find that it's easiest if you turn your body away from the desk so that you're not tempted to glance down. If you do it like this, then it's way too easy to just look down at the paper. And sometimes I will be really um, adamant about students not looking at the paper in a, a class, but that's really just because I want you to not judge what you're doing with this first one. So this is kind of a preliminary uh, practice here. Okay, so I know you guys can't see me now. I'm going to let you see my drawing, but um, I assure you my body is turned away uh, from my desk right now. But I'm not just looking at the outer lines of the hand. I'm looking at all of the wrinkles and folds that I see in my hand. I'm looking at the way the light is hitting the fingers. I'm looking at those contour lines across the knuckles. Yeah, I want to get the fingernails in there, but I don't care if they're in exactly the right place. The easiest way to do this is to not pick up your uh, drawing utensil and to just keep it moving in one continuous line. But if you do pick it up and move it around, I mean, there's no drawing, you know, police. There's no like wrong way to do this. Um, it's really just about having that direct communication between your eyes and the hand that is drawing. So you're going really slowly. You're looking at the relationship between the fingers to the finger next to it, um, trying to get every shape of light that you're seeing there. Um, some folds, some of those interesting value shapes, and then those overall big forms. Oops, I think I went off of the page. Like the big meaty part of the hand here. Okay, 
So not every blind contour drawing is going to be incredibly amazing and like worth um, putting on the fridge, right? But it, it's not about the, the product. It's about that direct communication between your eye and your drawing hand. And if you get something that even resembles a finger in some places, then that's great. Um, then you're, you know that you are developing that relationship between your, your looking and your, your drawing hand. You're developing a muscle memory. Okay, so, and if you feel like you need to slow down and if you go too fast, or if your first example doesn't look anything like a hand, it might be a good idea to do one where you are looking at your, uh, at your hand, at the subject of your hand while you're uh, drawing and do a practice one. So I wanna do that now. And um, and like I said, there is no blind contour line drawing police. So if you do you know, develop a pretty good muscle memory and you feel like you wanna have kind of a back and forth between looking and blind contour, that is, also okay. Some of my better blind contours do happen when I, uh, you know, technically cheat and I look a little bit or I kind of glance back and forth. But the reason I don't advise absolute beginners do that, like right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of looking back and forth a little bit, but I'm mostly looking at my hand. But the reason I don't advise absolute beginners do that is because when you, you know, cheat and look back and forth, which it's not really cheating, but it's just technically, you know, you're not doing a, a pure blind contour. But the reason I recommend beginners not do that is because it's that inner voice can be so critical and we can sometimes start to judge what we see on the paper and not you know, get so caught up in what we think is wrong with uh, the drawing that we lose that direct communication. So I think it's better to really practice doing the, the pure blind contour as much as possible so that you can really develop that muscle memory and that the looking muscle, the muscle of the communication from your eyes to your, your drawing hand. And after we do a, a few of these, I do want to go back to uh, what I was doing a moment ago, where I was kind of walking us through the anatomy of the hand and going very slowly, pointing out things that uh, I want you to gain um, an understanding of about the the form of the hand. Um, but I felt like I needed to to get to the the blind contour drawing before I, I rambled for too long. Any questions up until this point? No, I think we're good. Okay, cool. All right, so the other thing I wanted to point out just about, um, you know, looking and observing the, the form of the hand is uh, what I was starting to get out with the, the value shapes. So when we're looking at anything in light, which is everything, we can't see anything in a pitch black dark room, right? If we were to light, a candle in a dark room, all we're going to see is what the light is illuminating. So if I had just one very strong contrasting light on my hand right now, there would be a very dark shadow uh, falling across um, everything else, right? And th there is a pretty strong light source on my desk. And so th there are a lot of heavier shadows happening here. So another way you can approach your blind contour drawings, which is really how I approached um, these. Um, and also, by the way, the day that I planned for this class, and I was trying to get like some really good examples of blind contours overlapping like this, I probably did about 25 pages of not so amazing blind contour examples. So if you're judging, you know, 
the blind contour drawings that you're doing and comparing them to like, you know, these or or this one that I, I showed you, just know that these usually happened after a full day of um, sketching and drawing and um, drawing a lot of examples that maybe weren't um, so impressive. But um, another way to approach these, which is how I was really approaching these examples here is to draw the big shadowy shapes. And it's hard to tell because um, like, especially on the yellow one, because it's so light, but you can definitely see it in this red example here, how I'm sketching the big shadow shapes and I'm doing it blind. So they're not like as big as they maybe looked, um, you know, in real life, but it still comes across that that's a big shadowy shape right there. So I'm going to do another blind uh, sketch, but this time I'm going to lead myself around by the, the shadowy shapes. I'm going to actually turn off my ring light that I have here and see if I can get some heavier shadows to fall across my hand and I can. Okay, so you guys have to trust me that I'm trying not to look at my paper, even though it's like right in front of me on the screen too. I'm just, I'm trying to focus all my attention right here. So my eyes are staying trained onto the, the shapes that I'm seeing. And maybe you can believe me because the drawing is gonna be backwards from how it's appearing on the screen. So I'm looking at the shapes of shadows that I'm seeing. And I'm doing it blind. So I'm not trying not to look at my drawing. I'm trying to just lead myself around by those heavier shadow shapes. But then I also want to get some of the contour lines in there as well. Now there's this big shadow. It takes a lot of concentration. The soft pastels are also very good for this because you can really round them out and get a lot of big juicy shapes and shadows to happen this way. Okay, kind of missed the whole other side of my thumb there. All right, so there's my blind contour of my hand, just mainly looking at the shadow shapes. Let's do another one where we really focus on the, the whole uh, form of the hand. So we might end up with something like this. Um, and I'm gonna use just the side of the, the soft pastel to do this. Here, let me switch it up and use like a purple here. So I'm just gonna hold my hand off to the side and I am looking, I'm not doing this blind, but just to get like the whole three dimensions to happen and just thinking about how rounded everything is. All of these are just warm ups right now to improve our blind contour output. The more you practice looking and the more you practice sketching the subject with the with your drawing hand, the more the blind contours will, you know, resemble what you're trying to make them resemble. We've done this before in this uh, drawing series. There was a class on blind contour drawing uh, portraits and we used a mirror and drew faces and that class was back in November, I believe, and I forgot to 
mentioned that at the start of the class and have him gonna drop the link for that one in the chat, but it should be pretty easy to find. Um, it was called Artist Loft, Blind Contour, uh, portrait drawing. I'm just going to draw. If you've got a lot of dust happening on your paper, I'm just going to drop it on my desk, but you can also do it over a trash can or maybe outside if you have access to, to a door to go drop it outside real quick. But you definitely don't want too much dust accumulating, of which there will be a lot when you're working with soft pastels. Okay, how are we doing on time? 642. All right, I think it's time to start doing um uh, try to start making this magic happen okay so i'm using uh the primary colors red yellow blue and then black so i'm going to start with the lighter color um before we move on to this though is there any other like part of the hand that anybody is like confused about or struggle with that you'd like me to kind of focus on and do a little sketch of the contours or anything like that We'll see if someone puts something in the chat. Um, I do have a question for you, though. Uh, the class that you were just referencing, was that the drawing blind, blind contour line portraits and embracing mistakes? Is that the one? Yes, yes. Okay. I'll put it in the chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I forgot about the embracing mistakes part. Yeah, that's a, the exercise that I do at the beginning of that class on embracing mistakes is really fun because then the we kind of embellish the uh, portraits with um, doodles and lines and using the uh, artist loft um, markers, which is that are you know, the permanent markers. And that, that's really fun. Um, I just saw somebody said we don't have much time left exactly because blind contour drawings go really fast. If I had just done only what we're doing at the, the meat and potatoes of the class, it, it takes literally five minutes. Um, so I wanted to give you some, some preliminary um, help if you struggle with understanding the form of the hand. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the lighter color first, whichever um, color scheme that you chose, um, just pick the lightest color um, that you have in the, the colors that you selected. And then we're going to layer from light to dark. So, and the reason for that is, and I could pull out one of my other examples, but I guess I put them all away. But if you start with the black and then go over it, you know, and do multiple blind contours on top of it, you're going to end up with the yellows going to like look kind of yucky and it's going to like drag the black around and the, uh, and the blue around. And you're going to end up with a lot of like green and gray and like, you know, a lot of more messy colors. Whereas if you layer with the lightest color first and then go over it with the darker colors, you may have some blending happening where like the blue, you know, turns green where it, it connected with my yellow lines. And, you know, you might have some orange where the red connects with the yellow, but you're not going to have quite as much of that happening. So that's the reason to start with the lightest color. Let me switch to another blank page because I've already smeared a bunch of dust on that page. Okay, so you have to trust me that I'm mostly not looking at my paper, although I did admit that I do glance here and there. So don't feel guilty if you are glancing here and there. Just try not to judge yourself too much. And so I'm not just drawing the outer edges of the finger shapes. I'm looking at the shadows. I'm looking at all of the surface of the form and how those shadows wrap around the surface of the form and how those shadows hug the, um, the sides of the fingers, etc and the relationship, the negative space between each finger shape and form. And the yellow one is maybe not going to show up a lot on screen, but it still adds a neat effect when we layer them like this.
And the hardest part of blind contour drawing is, or just drawing a hand or period, is trying not to draw what you know is there and just drawing what you see. So even though you maybe can only see part of the finger, you know the rest of the finger is there, right? But I want you to just draw the part of the finger that is visible to you, and that's called foreshortening. And anytime the fingers are uh, curved towards you, like the general on the I want you for the US Army uh, poster is like pointing the finger towards the viewer, right? And we only see the front of the finger. When you look at that illustration, there's a lot of information missing in the, the drawing, but we still read it as a finger pointing towards us. So it gets confusing to the viewer when you try to draw from your brain and you try to draw what's there versus just drawing what you see. And a good blind contour drawing takes some time. You wanna go very slowly. If you're finishing a sketch of your hand as a blind contour drawing, if you're finishing in like 10, 20 seconds, um, it's probably because you're going too fast and you're not getting every wrinkle and fold in there. So you wanna slow down and really try to get every wrinkle and fold going. Okay, so for the next layer, I'm using red. So you wanna use whatever color is slightly darker in the colors that you chose. And I want you to change the uh, position of your hand. So, I mean, you could do layer these using the same hand position, but I think it's more interesting if you switch it up a little bit. So I had my hand like this for the last one. For this one, I'm just gonna put a couple of fingers straight up and just make it a little different. And I'm gonna start in a different part of the page so that I get my overlapping to happen in an interesting way. Hang on, I need to move some stuff on my desk so I can shift up a little bit. All right, so I'm going really slow, looking at all of the contours, all of the wrinkles and folds, all of those shadows. And if you are peeking, it's just a quick glance down, but then go back to looking at the, the subject, back to looking at the hand that you're drawing. So that was my red layer. Now I'm going to do blue. And again, I'm going to start in a different part of the paper. And I'm going to change my hand, do something else, like maybe that. And 
as long as you're going really slowly, this shouldn't get away from you too much. And if it does, that just makes it all the more interesting. Just like I was saying at the beginning of the class when I said I had some not so amazing examples and my best ones were happening after lots of practice, I feel like as this goes on, the drawings that I'm overlapping here are kind of turning out a little more impressive than the bottom layer. So. Hopefully that's happening for you too. You're seeing the product of all of this practice and warming up that we did. Next week when we draw the wooden mannequin hand in that premium class and when we do the realistic hand, I'm going to refer back to this class and suggest that everybody do some blind contour line drawing to warm up and practice before we do the more realistic drawings because this is the best exercise to do to, to warm up and to get your, um, your muscle memory going and to get your, your looking going because the act of looking is such a practice and it is a muscle, you know, even though it's not an, a physical muscle Practicing looking is, is so important. Um, okay, so I'm on my last layer using the uh, black. And let's see what hand gesture have I not used yet. I'll do something like that maybe. Hmm. How about that? Okay. And you want to start in a different place again than where you've been starting so that they're not all on top of each other and you can see all the different colors peeking through. And if you do this exercise a few times, you can start to strategically place some of the darker drawings in places where they overlap on top of the ones that maybe you don't love as much. Okay, so there is my example from today. Not too bad. Pretty fun. Okay, I would love to see some of y'all's examples um, of this exercise. And as predicted, we went right up to the end of the class when I get to the last part of the, the process here. So, um, I'm going to switch back to my forward facing view and um, 
if you just want to hold up your drawing, if you've got an example that you'd like to show, or maybe a couple of different examples, and Jimena can spotlight you. Let me see. I don't. Oh, we have iPhone three. Um, there we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, this, that's so good. We have oh, Barbara. Good. Those soft lines. Oh, very nice, Barbara. Oh, yeah. I love how you changed your gesture with each one. We have Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Oh, yes. Very nice. We have Deborah. Yeah. Carol. Oh, that shows that shows so much looking right there. The way that you're getting all those intricate lines um, on top of each other. That's I love seeing examples like that because I can tell you're really slowed down and looking very closely. We have Bridget. Oh, look at how nice and clean all those lines are. Lovely. And Christina. There's Christina. Hi, Christy. Love it. Yes. And Very Debbie. Nice. Ooh, nice. I like that some how just the different styles that are coming out of so much of these that look it looks like watercolor paper too. It's got a different tooth. Very nice. And Rebecca. Oh yeah. I like that you use some different colors there and all those interesting gestures and all those wrinkles and folds. And Tara. Oh yeah, again, uh, the more lines, the better. Really shows that you're, you're getting the most out of that practice. Heidi. Oh yes, I love it. It's so interesting too. I just love how abstracted they they can look, but you still see the hand within all of it and the fingers. Really nice. Um, river meetings. Oh, that's another great example. Man, you guys had so many wonderful examples here. We have Patty. Okay, nice. Um, Mary. Oh, here we go. Okay, cool. And Pamela. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I just love how it's like kind of this jumble of lines, but then you see the, the hand emerging in that gesture. It's so fun. And MC. Very nice. I like that you use some different colors there too. And Lynette. Oh, yes. Oh, that black uh, hand is very strong. And we have Liz. Oh, could you bring it, I think, further? Sister, maybe? Further back? <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> which direction. It's like a great example because I see lots of lines, but it's still blurry. Um, but it looks like it's a good one just because I see lots of lines. Yeah. Uh, it's still not coming through though. Oh, I see some fingers in there. Oh, we have another Zoom user. Ooh, look at all that soft rendering. Gorgeous. And back to you. I believe that's it. Um, if I didn't get to someone, um, I apologize. You can always post it on social media and I will put the hashtags in the chat for you. Okay, and yeah, and if anybody has any leftover questions, uh, feel free to join me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art. I'll be talking about um, tonight's class and upcoming classes, and I'll definitely be referring back to this one in the upcoming uh, drawing hands classes. So keep an eye out and sign up for the premium class next week on the 22nd for the wooden mannequin hand. And then, um, yeah, keep an eye out for that, that August class that I mentioned, it should be up soon. Thank you everyone and have a great evening.